Hi everyone, I am Akash and I am back with another video. I am starting a new series, new polyfill series. So in this particular series, I will be sharing all the polyfill questions from basic till advanced that were asked to me during front-end interview rounds. So friends, I keep sharing all these front-end interview experiences with you all. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel and do watch this video till the end. So friends, let's first have a look at the polyfill for forage. So let's first make a sample array. So this is our sample array. Now let's try to run a forage loop on this particular array. So for this, what you have to do is you simply need to use this forage. And inside this, it will take a callback function which have access to all the elements. And then I can simply console.log the elements. Let's have a look at the output. So as we can see, the output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Basically, we have simply traversed the array and simply printed the output. Now, now in order to make the polyfill of forage, what we need to do is we need to make our forage. So let's name it my forage. And now what we have to do is in order to make it accessible to all the array, all the array instances that we are going to create, what we can do is we can pass this to array constructor prototype. Like this is the prototype property that is available to all the constructors and objects uh, in JavaScript. So what we can do is we can simply attach it to this prototype property of array constructor. And over here, we can simply create a function. So friends, now this function is going to take a callback. Okay. So callback, basically this particular callback. You can also write this callback in this particular manner. Like this will be your print something function that is going to take an element and it is going to console.log an element. Now this is going to take the callback. Now friends, what we have to do is we need to run a loop on the array on which we are going to call it. So let's suppose this is the ARR. This is our array and we have to call this on the array like my forage, this particular function. Okay, cool. And then we have to pass the callback and we have this callback over here. Cool. So this is how we are going to call it. Now we need to access this array so that we can traverse over it. So to traverse, I will be using a simple for loop. Okay. Let index equals zero, index less than array dot length, index plus plus. So friends, over here we need to have the access to that array. So let me tell you one thing. Let's console dot log this over here. What this is referring to. Okay, array is not a not defined. Let's console it. Let's have a look. So friends, as you can see, this array, we can access this inside this method, inside this function with the help of this. So what you need to do is now you simply need to run a loop till this, this dot length. Cool. And inside this, all you need to do is call your callback, call your callback function and simply pass these element, this at i. Cool. Let's comment this and let's console uh, let's comment this also and we have this callback that we are passing inside this forage now let's try to run it okay so it is saying i is not defined we all have this habit of using i as our index so that's why it's a muscle memory friends so cool as we can see we have got one two three four and five so this is the polyfill for forage that you can make in your interview round. Okay. So we can also have a look at this forage. What does it takes actually? So it takes a callback function and that callback function, it also takes a, uh, this argument basically. So that callback function takes a value index and array. So what you can do is if you want to like give it access to the 
uh, value you and index and the array you can like make it callable like this in this particular manner so let's have a look at look at it once again okay it is uh, let me comment this one and it works in the same way cool i hope this particular polyfill was clear to you all so now friends what we can do uh, this was cool uh, let's comment this particular piece of code so now using the same array we are going to make a polyfill for map so friends do you guys know what is the difference between map and for each so a, a simple difference between map and for each is that like similarity is that with the help of them we can traverse the array but a uh, difference is that map always returns us a new array with the modified elements inside it but for each returns undefined it does not return anything okay so let's have a let's write this um, implementation first and it is going to as i have told you it is going to return us some thing let's take it in response and let's have a map over here and let's perform some operation like i'm saying that multiply all the elements with two let's console it so as you can see it has provided us a new array with the with all the elements inside it multiplied by two now how you are going to like basically how we are going to write a polyfill for it once again in order to make it accessible to all the array instances i am going to add it to the prototype property of the array constructor so it will be my map okay and now it is going to have a function cool and this function is going to be have access to this callback method cool now what we have to do is once again we know that it is used to traverse so we are going to use the for loop cool so we are going to use the for loop and as you know we have the access let's write the thing first like how we are going to call it so this will be our array and we are going to call this but what i'm doing and we are going to call this my map over here cool and what i've done is i have simply passed this callback function inside it cool so we are going to have the callback access over here now 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 what we have to do now this particular callback basically now this particular polyfill should return us a new array so in order for that let's take a response array cool and now what we have to do now we have to simply do is response dot push we have to push it with the output of this callback what is this callback doing this callback is simply giving us simply multiplying the particular element with the two so what will happen over here is we are going to call that callback over here and pass it this at index cool over here let's make it this so now what will happen over here is that this is the response first what we are doing is first we are like getting the result from the callback so we have simply passed this at index at i and it will return us like let's suppose we have one over here so it will be returning two because this particular callback will be running on each of these element and modifying them and returning their modified value and when we get that modified value we are simply pushing it back to the response array so finally what we are going to do is return this response cool friends now let's have a look at this console.log command cool so as you can see we are getting this 2 4 6 8 10 you you can also like multiply 3 you or you can like perform any operations that we want so we got 3 6 9 12 15 friends one more thing you can also check its signature like how it looks so it has the callback function that takes value index and array okay value of this generic type index number and this generic array okay so if you don't know this t it simply means a generic type in typescript uh, if you have like uh, done some coding in java in college time then you must have gone through the word generic so 
cool so what we can do is we can give it this axis using like index and the array so what it will help us is like inside this callback if you want to perform some like if you want to play with this index or the array so you can easily do it cool so yeah so friends this is it few key notes to remember that we first thing is that we need to make it accessible to other instances so that could be achievable using prototype property and then we simply need to have this function because it is a function and then it is running a particular function on each elements of the array so we need to simply pass that callback and inside that we simply need to write our own logic cool so friends if you are going to write this particular piece of code in front of interviewer then i guess he will be satisfied and yeah um, it is a good to go so this is it for this particular video friends uh, two polyfills we have covered for each and map and in the upcoming videos we will be covering more polyfills these are the basic polyfills in the upcoming videos we will be covering advanced polyfills as well so stay tuned and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you for watching